To be baptism, there must be a death, a resurrection, and you must be renewed by the Holy Spirit. That's what we're supposed to have happen. Then in verse 15, somebody told me that I got a thing about false prophets. Well, let's see. The New Testament has a thing about false prophets. I don't have a thing about false prophets itself. They make me sick. But nonetheless, verse 15, this is what Jesus said. Jesus said, beware of the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. So they're hungry, dangerous wolves with a whole different agenda and motive. They look anointed. They shout anointed. They pray anointed. They preach anointed. They do all that they have mimicked. Think about the, 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 the Azusa revival produced. It produced the PAW. It produced the Pentecostal movement in America. It produced the Church of God in Christ and all those things. And a lot of these people that was in, encountering these things were not the most educated people. So they couldn't break things down in different ways or whatever, theologically. But what they knew is sanctification. What they knew is they had to give their all to God. And they cried out and they, they did all these things. And the Lord moved on them in different ways. And guess what the next generation did? Just copied that. They didn't get on their face and their knees and get it like they got it. They didn't take the education they had and implied it for the good of the kingdom of God. They implied it for the kingdom of themselves. They figured out a way to create a game to get out of you what they needed so that they themselves could live the life of luxury that they so desired. Think about the bishops and people back then. They didn't have the lifestyles that these folk have today. They also didn't have the they, they didn't have the lifestyles, you know. They didn't have the bread, but they didn't have the lifestyles that a lot of these people have today. Do you hear what I'm saying? We need to be thinking about this. So here they are coming in sheep clothing, but they actually wolves on the uh, in the inner side. They know the agenda. They don't really believe in God. They believe in hustle. They believe in pimping. They believe in hoes and pimps and getting their money. And the church folk bringing them their money and getting their money and doing what they need them to do. So we have a revival to get you all central and hungry and thinking you're getting the presence of God and all that kind of stuff. But isn't it funny that the messages that are preached today are not converting people's lives? It's only keeping people stuck in the same old situation and keeping people from actually getting to God. Ooh, that sounds like what Jesus said about the Pharisees in Matthew chapter 23. When he says that, that, that you prevent people from going into the kingdom of God. Why? Because you aren't there. You're not adhering to the things of God. You won't even reveal what's been shown to you and you can't see because you're blind. And so that's what we got going on. So this is what he goes on to say. He says in verse 16, you will know them by their fruits. What fruits? He said, grapes are not gathered from the bushes nor the figs from thistles, are they? So every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad trees bear bad fruit. So in other, way, other, way, other words, if you connect it to me, if you connect it to the things of the kingdom, then according to the scriptures, Titus and Timothy, there's certain behaviors that leadership should be able to adhere to. Why? Not because of their flesh, but by the Holy Spirit, by revelation and by their comprehension and understanding, that they're able to walk out what God said, not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit, says the Lord. That fruit, the secret life, the things that go on for real, the uh, uh, what we do in the secret places, that's what should be bearing the fruit of God. It's not what we do in ministry. It's not how we sound. It's not what we look like. It's not how we grab our ears. It's not how we prophesy. None of all that imp impresses God. Okay? None of that impresses God. Alright? I'll say it again. None of that impresses God if our lives are not living or pr producing the fruit that says that we're in Him. Let's go on. And so, it says, every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, nor can a bad tree produce good fruit. So, so in other words, you can't be in God and produce uh, works of the flesh. You can't be in the Spirit and produce works of the flesh. You have to be in the Spirit. Or you have to be in the flesh. All right. So verse 19 says, every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. That means if you're not bearing the lifestyle of being connected to the tree, you're going to be cut off and sent to hell. That's what the Bible says. 
So then you will know them by their fruits. That's what Jesus said. You will know them by their fruits. What fruits? The life they live on a day-to-day -day basis. Not, not in hypocrisy or all that other kind of stuff, but striving for righteousness. A, a leader ought to be able to tell this the people that follow him, like Paul, follow me as I follow after Christ. We shouldn't be going around talking about I'm only human and I, I like me and you know and, and God knows my heart and, and I, I'm not used to just being with one woman. I got to fulfill the lust of my flesh. I, I, I got I got to I got to I got to, 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 to itch that scratch in my flesh. I got to fulfill the lust of my flesh. That ain't what a leader should be saying. The leader should be if nobody should be able to say fall after me. Because I'm following after Christ. And by the Spirit, I quench my flesh. By the Spirit, I walk after and fulfill the things of the Spirit. Where, where, where is this kind of talk gone? It's gone away. Because we said that the people that talk like that was religious and hard and difficult and impossible and unreal. I'm not saying that there's not shortcomings. I'm not saying that there's not times of temptation. I have it every day. So do you. But it doesn't say that we have to fall to temptation. You know how I know? Because Paul said over in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I'm going to turn over there and read it to you so you know it's not my opinion. Uh, chapter 10 verse 13. He said, no temptation has overtaken you but such as is common to man. And God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will provide the way of escape also so that you will be able to endure it. There's times I've endured sin or temptation and not fallen to sin. Don't you have victorious life times and lives? So the Bible says in verse 21, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father, uh, uh, who is in heaven, will enter. So what is the will of the Father? It's them laws that you discount. The will of the Father is, is, is that which he revealed himself and revealed to the Jews when he called them out from the Gentiles. Go read Acts chapter 15 and tell me what you think about it. Uh, because this is what the standard was that they told the, the, the Gentiles to refrain from or abstain from uh, so that they would be in the covenant. Which was the same thing God said to them. Don't eat of idols. Don't drink of idols. Don't have sexual immorality amongst you. All those type of things. God said the same thing. It's the law. It's the law. It's the law. You got to remember the apostles only had the Torah. They only had the Torah. They had New Testament. They had the Torah. So there's no way that we can understand New Testament without understanding the Old Testament. Somebody said, I'm you watching right now. Somebody saying, but Jeremiah said that God will give us, give you hearts of flesh and write the law upon your heart. And that this is the new covenant. And that's what the Bible says. But what law do you think he's going to put on your heart? God is not an ever-changing God. He's a one he's a one uh, a one-track God. He spoke it, he speaks it, and it is so. And when we get out of the refrain of the law in which he has established, then we are uh, in a position where we have locked God out of the situation. And so it says, uh, Many will say unto me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name cast out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of, uh, are you workers of iniquity, or you who practice lawlessness. What does that mean? When you practice lawlessness, it means you've went against the law. Well, what law do you think Jesus is talking about? Huh? What law do you think Jesus is talking about? It's the law that was given from Yahweh, from Jehovah, the God of the Jews, the Father of Yeshua, the Father of all, according to Ephesians 1, who comes into faith, that one faith. That is in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is in the one Father, the giver of all revelation, the creator of all things. There's only one God. Jesus, the Bible says, Jesus said, uh, uh, the sheep I have, the, I have sheep that are not of this fold that I must bring in. Uh, uh, he said there will be one shepherd. There will be one uh, uh, group. There will be one sheepfold and one shepherd. Jesus is the shepherd. Jews are the uh, uh, sheepfold as well as Gentiles. So, so God plan is to redeem all men unto him under Jesus Christ. And so these are the things that we have to understand. How is it that we don't agree on these simple truths? 
There's nothing complicated about what I just said. It's simple truths. But brothers and sisters, you must be awakened because the Bible says that there will be a strong delusion in the land and many will fall into it. Do not fall for the trap of the enemy. Do not fall for the trap of the enemy. Do not fall for the trap of the enemy. But try the spirit by the spirit to see if it be of God. Watch the lifestyle. Watch the interaction between the man or woman of God with the people. Watch how they treat people, how they live. Watch how they treat their spouses. Watch how they live and walk out this thing in which they say they believe. Don't put them on pedestals. But they should be examples because that's what God has called us to be. Read Jeremiah uh, 20, uh, uh, 23, 9 to 32 and tell me what you think about God when, when it's talking about the priests and the false prophets and things of that nature. All right, brothers. Father, we thank you and praise you and magnify you. I pray for my brother and my sisters watching this that, Father, you will not allow them to be deceived, but, Father, you will allow them to come into all truths and to deeper revelation and knowledge of you. God, I thank you right now for meeting them in their dreams and meeting them in their study times and their prayer time, Father God. I pray, Father God, that you will break the bondages that are over the minds of the people. Father, I pray that you would uncover the eyes and uncover the ears, Father God, that have been blinded by the witchcraft that's been released in the atmosphere through the church. Father, I curse right now the spirit of Baal. I curse right now the spirit of Jezebel in the name of Jesus. We take down the tactics of the enemy and every door that's been opened to you, I shut in the name of Jesus and seal it with the blood. Hallelujah of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you that you, you promise and said that the gates of hell shall not prevail. Hallelujah against the church or the ecclesia. And so today we pray, Father God, that you will cause your ecclesia to stand up and contend for the faith, Father God, to fight for what they know is true and right and stand in righteousness regardless of persecution, regardless of what may come or what may not come. Father, we pray right now that you would have your way. Manifest your glory. Manifest the kingdom. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Bless you, my brothers and my sisters.